Namaskar, I'm Harpreet Kaur and I welcome you all to this session. You are watching us on eVidya channel number 9 and also on our YouTube channel NCERT official. And today in this session we have taken a topic for class 9, chapter is 8 and the topic is a slumber did my spirit seal. It's a poem and we are going to talk about it. And for that, we have our expert in the studio. We have with us Miss Shivani Parashar. She is former assistant professor from RIE Ajmer. Welcome to the studio, ma'am. Thank you so much, Harpreet. It's a pleasure. And uh, viewers, if you want to ask questions directly to our expert, you can always call us on our telephone number, which is 8800 and you can also email us your questions, your suggestions and feedback on dth.class9 at ciet.nic.in. And before we move ahead, here is a very important announcement about India's G20 presidency. Well, we are proud of the fact that India has assumed G20 presidency and will convene G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023. A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency will be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding out pragmatic global solutions for, of the problems for the well-being of all, of course, and while manifesting the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam, that his world is one big family. And on this note, we are going to start our discussion for today's session and I am of course um, going towards Shivani ma'am she is going to tell us what exactly do we mean by this poem starting this particular poem before we go on to how we are going to read with the poem and right. go with the flow I would ask the learners and the and you of course that how do you feel how do you feel when you lose something which is very dear to you or you lose something which is you which you love some uh, which you love or your favorite thing how do you feel about it well the loss is really deep and we feel sad lonely disappointed grief stricken and what not see exactly when you feel something like this for a thing Think about that what the poet must be thinking when he loses his own beloved Right. With this, we are going to start our poem. I'm Let's sure he's like feeling very bad and very, depressed. very disappointed and depressed. Absolutely. Yeah. So here comes the poem. First, we'll go with normal reading and perhaps post that we'll do. A slumber did my spirit seal. I had no human fears. She seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly years no motion has she now no force she neither hear nor sees rolled round in earth's dunal course with rocks and stones and trees with this we'll come to the first two lines of this poem the first two lines of this poem says, A slumber did my spirit seal, I had no human fears. When here in these lines, the poet is talking about that he is into a deep sleep. He is talking about the slumber that his soul is in. When we are talking about the slumber, it means the dormancy, the inactiveness of the soul. Right. Right. And the spirit is the soul or mm. the essence of a human being yes. and we are talking about it that he, he was he had gone into that emotional numbness mm. he has gone to the tranquil state the numbness the emotionless state where his soul is not feeling anything and when it comes to i had no human fears it indicates that he was not afraid during the state of slumber he was not thinking that he he would you know lose on to someone very dear to him or he was not afraid that any that there is anything that devoid that can devoid him or make a hollow feeling for him right right 
it basically tells about the tone of the poem that he was feeling very depressed he was feeling into the he has went into the uh, state of denial yes it's very difficult to accept when you lose your loved one and in this case uh, the poet has uh, lost his beloved so it's a very um, deep grief for him and probably he is unable to even express what exactly is going on exactly the next two lines says she seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly ears when i speak about the touch of earthly ears uh, she specifies that his beloved she was a female it's a personification it personifies the female figure a thing that could not feel when we talk about a thing that could not feel that the beloved has deceased has gone into a cold clay theek hai and she ha- she cannot feel anything about it there is a sense of detachment or being distant another thing is that could not feel as a divide of any senses or any kind of an emotion it gives a vivid description of deceased loved one when we talk about a touch of earthly ears it speaks about that uh, there is a disconnection from the worldly or the earthly times the loss of vitality it talks about it talks about as if the person has when when you see there is this very beautiful thing that we talk ki um, you know uh, when you lose a human being when it goes lifeless ठीक है, we never use thing for a living being, but mm. when it is dead, when this person does not have any essence of life or any drive of life, it has turned into a thing. The first line, she seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly ears. Did you understand that? Yes, absolutely. So deep, you know, when somebody is alive, we address the person by his or her name. But when somebody is dead, that person, that individual, becomes a body, and um, that is so, um, you know, unimaginable how much a person is going through at that time. The person who was your beloved is no more, lifeless body. That's it. there's a hollow that a person feels yes. there's a void in a person's life that they are not able to you know come into the realization that they have lost their beloved person yes acceptance comes really late at times we come to the poetic devices that has been used in the first four lines of this poem it is symbolism and personification symbolism the seal that we talk about it talks about the close or the closure or the lock or a permanency in life the soul of the poet has gone into a permanent denial that this poet is not able to understand things he is not able to uh, feel anything he had went into an emotional void another symbolism is a slumber which which you know come to a very inactive state a place where you know uh, it shows that ki th- there is Uh, a kind of sleep a deep sleep that the poet is in it represents a deep state of meditation in a way or emotional numbness the personification as a poetic device which is used in the last uh, four lines is she which attributes to human like qualities to an abstract idea so the poet is talking about his beloved who is who tends to be a female Can you read the first four lines for me, Harpreet? Yes, why not? A slumber did my spirit seal. I had no human fears. She seemed to think that could not feel the touch of earthly years. No motion has she now, no force. She neither hears nor sees. Rolled round in earth's dunial course, with rocks and stones and trees. coming to the next two lines of this poem no motion has she now no force it talks about the devoid of any physical movement or any energy that means it it is a portrayal of a stillness or yes. lack of vitality which the author can feel towards his deceased yes. beloved yes yes she neither hear nor sees the entity has gone cold clay there is 
has gone inactive, the absence of life's worth or the warmth of the life is there. No motion has she now, no force. It suggests that no strength is there within the body. She is lying down like a corpse and neither hear nor sees. Absence of sensory perceptions. The line evokes the feeling of loss and the grief within the poet. Absolutely. The poet is flustered, anxious, disappointed, depressed. Somewhere uh, he's experiencing a kind of dark spot, you know, at the moment. He doesn't know where to go, which way to take and what to look forward to. Absolutely. The next, the final and the last lines are rolled around in earth's dunal course with rocks and stones and tree. When we talk about dunal, that is the daily, the repetitive course, something which is into a loop. Mm. The earth's dunal course is the earth's repetitive movement, which is the rotation of the earth on its own axis. When we talk about these lines, the con, you know, he said that the dead body has been now been cr uh, criminated is now the part of uh, the earth and it is revol uh, it is rotating with the earth as the earth is going it talks about the two has been one the nature and the body the dead body of his beloved has become one with uh, as this beloved lost the life there is no warmth in it as in the body with rocks and stones and tree you know, in, in the timeless cycle of nature, agar hum baat karte hai, when there is a, a, a continuity and the stability of natural world, to uski andar, as the human is cremated, it talks about the loss that now it has become a very daily routine that she, she will not be there. But she will be there as well within the earth's surface, right? And how deep is that, that the body has become one with the nature? person is not there, person is not alive, but the person still exists as part of the nature. And you can always feel the presence, the energy is there, I guess, because soul never dies. Absolutely. So basically, this poem has a very deep philosophical yes. and an emotional touch to it, right? Right. So once you have, um, we have already read this poem, what do you think, what is the theme of the poem? Well, I guess the theme of the poem is uh, about loss and how fragile human life is, how uh, temporary we are in this world. As they say, sometimes, you know, they compare human beings to a bubble that it can burst any time and we will be no more. Absolutely. It talks about, you know, the eternal separation as well. It talks about the transient nature of life. It talks right. about the bitter, inevitable truth about the death, about separation. The poem, it urges to reflect on the fleeting nature of existence for us. And not only this, what do you think could be the moral of the story when we tend to relate it to our real lives? I believe uh, that, you know, one has to make peace with the fact that the person is no more. One has to go on with his or her life. And that's what poet uh, means when he says she has become one with the nature, that he has to continue with his life uh, till he meets her on the other side of the universe. On the same line, it does convey the meaning that whatever time we have with us, we are supposed to, you know, enjoy it yes. with our loved ones. We need to make memories before we yes. depart with our loved ones. True. So can we read this poem? Can you read this poem for me? Why not? A slumber did my spirit seal. I had no human fears. She seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly years. No motion has she now, no force she neither hears nor sees. Rolled round in earth's diurnal course with rocks and stones and trees. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Let's talk about William Words, who is the author of this poem. Absolutely. He is the poet. I wanted to ask you who this amazing person is who has penned down such a lovely and deep poem. William Wordsworth is a very renowned poet from Romantic Era and I would really love that you and our learner try to research a little bit by themselves so that they can understand more about the poet.
And before we culminate this particular lesson, I would like to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Can you relate to any personal incident or how do you feel after reading this poem? You can resonate or with the same kind of a feeling or the connection? Why not? We all are human beings and we have faced a loss of our near and dear ones in our life. We have experienced death firsthand, most of us I'm sure. And this is a feeling uh, that cannot be expressed in words. There is a void that cannot be filled. There is a loss. But again, um, there are beautiful memories that are left behind. You know, the time that you spent with the person. You cherish those moments throughout your life till you are alive. And I guess I really relate to it. That person becomes one, in the, one with the nature. The soul never dies. It's always there. You just have to be a little sensitive that yes the person that energy is there the person is not there physically but emotions memories they live on with this i want to ask you another thing what if this poem has been into a visual representation or you would have painted a drawing of this poem what all elements you would have incorporated well, that's a very good question for the students as well. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, the poem is so deep that I'm still um, absorbed uh, with the feeling of it. I cannot uh, digest, you know, uh, the fact that uh, it is written so beautifully in such a romantic manner and it's conveying such a deep message. So, ma'am, I would request you to tell us about your imagination on this. How would you depict this poem through visuals? you know a very serene landscape where the human would have been alone sitting under a tree in the you know seeing his cremated uh, the stone of his beloved and thinking about how he spent his particular time with this person and uh, a very green and with subtle tones that would be my take on this particular visual absolutely and i also uh, you know want to ask a question here uh mom how do you think uh, that this poem actually uh, describes the loss of a loved one in your words how would you describe the feeling that comes to a person when he or she loses somebody who's so beloved because we have seen um, so many tragedies happening in our homes in our societies in our neighborhood how how do you experience that and what do you think uh, should be uh, you know the um, best outcome of it i know that is not a very good experience or a beautiful experience but then we can always derive something best out of anything that we have experienced in life what's your take on that ma'am there is always a void that has been left of the departure of our loved ones the place cannot be taken by anyone in our life that particular position holds something for that particular person Speaking of that, what best we can be derived is cherish the moments that we have spent with them, cherish those memories and for future we need to understand that as much as we can we are supposed to spend our time with our loved ones so that when such times, such an inevitable, such a bitter truth comes, when we come in contrast with it, we are able to deal with it in a very uh, subtle manner. And ma'am, if somebody is experiencing such a loss, how can we, uh, you know, make that person calm and relaxed in these testing times? It's very difficult. So what can we do best for that person? The grief is very personal when we talk about it. The grief comes to individuals in a very indifferent manner. For you, for someone, it could be a few days. For some people, will be taking a few months to come over it. When it comes to how to make things better, just staying around or sticking around to them would help easing down the pain. The more you share, the lesser your sorrows will be. And Coming to the poem, yes. I just want to ask you, do you know anything about the rhyming scheme of this poem? No, but I really want you to shed some light on it. Sure. Coming, uh, can you see the screen? There is this, in the presentation, we can see, A slumber did my spirit seal, I had no human fears. In the rhyming scheme is basically the how the line ends with a rhythm. If we put A as seal and fears as B as the last words, the second line says it seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly ears. Seal's rhyming word is feel and fears rhyming word is ears. So it is AB, AB. 
the next four line goes no motion has she now no force she neither hear nor sees the last two lines says rolled round in earth's dunal course with rocks and stones and trees no force is in rhyming with course and sees is in rhyming with trees so the rhyming scheme goes as c d c d the rhyming scheme for this whole poem is a b a b c d c d well that's a lovely explanation of the rhyming scheme and thank you so much ma'am for explaining this poem so beautifully to all our viewers and for conveying this message in such a nice and understanding manner that i'm sure each one of us who are listening to this poem who is watching this program is relating to what exactly the poet is trying to convey thank you so much ma'am for being here it was a pleasure and there is this little assignment that i would like our learners to get on to their toes with why don't you write this poem in your own language speaking about your own set of emotions and your own set of feelings if you have faced something like that yes why not i'm sure viewers will be interested to do that and students will do that dutifully and now it's time for us to wrap up uh, this session but before we leave here is something very important that i want to tell you about ncert textbooks well they are available across the country at our different uh, sales counters which are located at New Delhi, Kolkata, Bangalore, Ahmedabad and Guwahati. You can purchase your books from there on weekends and weekdays. And if you want to place order of your books online, you can log on to ncrtbooks.ncert.gov.in. That's our website through which you can place an order and books will be delivered to your doorstep free of cost. Apart from that, you can also download the soft copies of these books in PDF format from NCERT website, Diksha and E. Patshara. And now, before I wrap up this session, it's uh, very important for me to let you know about the upcoming session. Well, there will be a webinar on um, online financial security and today you will be uh, listening to a discussion on Aadhaar and digital financing transactions. Till then, this is me, Harpreet Kaur, taking leave of you. I'll join you soon. Namaskar.